What the, man, creepy. I like Taylor last night, I saw, I just came in and, and there was just, I saw just in my prefs, of just a, like black hair, like late at night. And I'm, I'm scared of the dark, so. I'm not scared of the dark. Okay, we're back. Part three, carry our stretched wheelbase stock length Bronco. Something I didn't write on here, right when I say that, is instead of modifying, so it's got Raptor glass in the front, uh, it's a pretty clean conversion. I usually wouldn't say that about most Raptor conversion glass, but this one actually works. I think the presence is proper with this thing. Um, we were originally gonna modify, you know, the tricky part is, since it's not a stretch Bronco, but the wheelbase is stretched. The glass, like just to have it mounted on here, it just had some kind of crude overhang, maybe, yay. So what we wanna do is like, I've, I kinda did the measurements as far as like the tail light being on the same plane as the tailgate, uh, the actual like Raptor tail light, and it, at compression, it'll still clear. So it's not like the tire is gonna clash into the tail light. But what we're gonna do is work with Fiberworks and um, we're gonna get them some scans and then I will sketch this thing and we will have like a proper fender for this. And the other part that's nice is if you are building a Bronco and you want to run Raptor glass and you don't wanna cut and widen and blah, blah, blah. Joey's going, oh yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, we will have a bedside available so you can get your wheelbase, but you don't need to get the rest out of the truck. Uh, so it'll be, you know, the other thing like proportion dimensionally, it is going to be a very short overhang. So think about the axle at ride height or at compression. Think about a 39 inch tire, um, you know, it's short, right? So that's not a lot of span. So that's why like we're banking on a rear tire carrier for this thing. Uh, where we'll have two 39, it'll be, it'll be set up for 40s, but we will have two 39s back here, kind of at an angle, set up high, we'll get into that. Uh, we've had a lot of progress since the last update, so I am going to read my list. You know, I realize that this, and I don't want to jinx it right now, but when I read this, it does something in my brain, and then it programs it, and then somehow we get through all of it, and like, I've sat and proof, what would you call it, proof read, proof listened to the episodes? I don't know. If you send them to me and I, I usually just put my earbuds in and I don't even watch them, I just like listen. Just proof. Yeah, and I, I'll proof the episode and I notice that I usually hit the point. So it, there's something to this. Um, just no particular order. Front scan, shock mounts welded, bump stops, strike pads, sway bars, standoffs, fuel cell, final welding, limit strap tabs, rear bumper, tailgate storage, tire swinger, fuel cell hold downs. Uh, progress. Seats ordered, seats mounted, tire hold down done, fuel cell pump filter mounted, fuel cell seam saddles, seat structures, fuel fills and pickups. So those last, the last portion of things there is stuff that we're gonna do next. Um, but we will kind of run through this. So last time you saw this, we had just the bare bones. We had the shock mounts tacked in. They were not welded. They were just, I think they were just prepped. So none of the like corner passes were done, the final passes. Uh, they were just in there just so you guys could see it. All of the tube structure was root passed and prepped, but it was not welded. So um, those two items are complete. The only thing, like these are tacked in proper. Shock mounts were welded off the car. They're tacked in, they're prepped for final welding. And then these guys, everything is uh, cover pass. So like all of this is done. It takes a lot of time. It is like for myself now, I am not, I don't enjoy welding like I used to. So it just, it's more of like a time thing because it takes so long and I just don't see the progress. Like I, that instant gratification that you kind of want is just, you have to really work for it. So all of that is complete. 
Um, our bump stops are done. They are in here. The sway bar is moved. It used to have provisions up here. Uh, it kind of did some weird stuff too with the suspension at compression. It got really close to the upper links. Uh, we also freed up a lot of up travel. So that thing just didn't have a good home there, uh, especially trying like it had a, the real constraint was the arm did like some really wonky stuff to get around the shocks. And I think even when this thing starts swinging, like the axle, um, you know, going up higher on one side than the other side, the, the shocks would clash or crash into the sway bar arm. So now we have like a more proper style setup here, 74 weld arm, uh, proper inch and a half bar in there. And this thing's like, it's tight. Like these bolts are danger close to the bump can, but that's okay. Uh, and then obviously new sway bar tie rods, uh, our classic kind of signature strike pad on the axle uh, where the bump stop's gonna make contact and then new limit strap tabs as well off the back. Okay, let's kind of start with the bump stops. Um, this is kind of our, like our signature we've been running. And um, when I say signature, it doesn't mean that like other places or shops have not done it before, but just, it makes sense for us to run the bump stop at an angle instead of like straight up and down, especially how the rear end cycles. Um, same with the shocks, you know, like just having everything in line in accordance with each other makes sense to us. Uh, and these are all like designed where we can weld them off of the car. Uh, same as the shock mounts you can see in here. All that stuff was welded, you know, on the table where it's considerably easier. And it's the same with these. So like we can get all the can passes uh, and, all, and all like the boxing and stuff. That's all done uh, on the table. And then we just simply kind of plug these back in. They don't really move that much. Another thing you'll see is we always run a machine slug in here for distortion. Uh, when I was younger and a degenerate with fabrication, I had, I've, I've definitely done at least two or three pairs of bump stops um, where I would just take my time and I'll just weld like an inch at a time over the course of like half a day with the bump stop in there, just uh, degaffing. So nowadays this is optimal, like especially if you, you have like a really long portion. Uh, usually the rule of thumb here is there's a, there's the, the bump stop is primarily machined uh, to like a, like a looser tolerance in here. And then the tightest part is kind of a, a lip or a, a, you know, a ring on the bottom that's thicker. So it's like the rule of thumb is to not weld. I think it's like an inch and a half or inch and three quarter. But if you ever stick your finger in that can, you can kind of feel there's like a lip on the inside. And, you know, to make life easier, usually you don't want to weld to that lower portion. Uh, but with these slugs, like these are machined to the same tolerance as the bump stop. And then the actual deck height from like the bottom of the can to the bottom of the slug is the same as if you had a compressed bump stop in there. And then you had like just the flat spot of nylon, not where it, it's domed, but where it goes flat. So it's, it's like, it's preservation for when that thing uh, wears down, you know, and, and it's built for that. So you're actually using that nylon pad as a consumable. And then once it gets to that wear point where you need to replace it, that's the actual compression that this is set up for and the whole truck is set up for. Uh, this is the same kind of signature thing that we've been running um, on all of the trucks. Removable strike pad. Got that from RJ. Um, RJ was the first one I've seen do that on the Willys. Uh, and we just kind of took that and then obviously like skewed it and twisted it into our own design. And you know, made it functional for our application, but you know, all this is all prepped. You can see like there's a bevel on here. So remember like on the fab diaries, the, the root pass is done on all that stuff. And that's, that's kind of one of the things is I have, uh, that's kind of one of the things where I, the, I'm confident in the guys to do the root pass and get good penetration and something sanitary for the first pass, but for the second pass, I'm still kind of at that point with the quality control where I like to come through and put my seal of approval or my stamp on there uh, and final pass the stuff. So like everything is ready for me to come in and get it. Um, all the edges, all of the axle welding, the limit strap tabs are on here. They're 316s. We're running triple straps on the back. So this is all tied in and then there's brackets back here. So these guys, this is our, um, our limit strap like clevis system and the rear bumper like obviously there's some primitive shapes in the rear bumper but what we did is we took a template here so these guys will bolt on to the outsides here and then we'll obviously like want to trim 
some of the perimeter here to make sense. And then we're gonna add another hole. Um, so that, that lower hole there, you'll see the two upper bolts. And then we're gonna add a third bolt there. And this will be the holder for the clevis. Um, and you can kind of see that the alignment here, like the angle that that's at, that's hitting the limit strap perfect here. Maybe I'll have Joey get some of that. So you can see those are all final. Uh, we're gonna keep most of the stuff on like the rear, like the pivots are okay, everything cycles nice. So we really just wanted to identify like the things that we need to. Um, the bump stop, you know, before it had kind of like a outrigger system where the thing came off the frame quite a bit um, and it just didn't make sense for packaging. So now like kind of see everything's in line. Same like, you know, we have our 74 weld arm and then this portion, like the fabricated portion, is kicked out to put everything in like perfect alignment. So the actual tie rod of the sway bar is in line and 90 degrees. So nothing's binding. What you can see right here is like, I don't think the suspension is completely extended, but you can tell that the alignment here on the sway bar tie rod is not like upset. What can happen here is if you get this where, you know, this arm goes down more and this the tie rod starts to get closer to where this straightens out, you can kind of hyper extend these things. Uh, and that's a big no-no. And then the next one is, if this goes up and this arm, you know, gets too tight, like the tie rod and the sway bar arm, like get binded like this, they don't work. You know, if you start to like, if this angle is up here and then your tie rod is, is like at a really tight bind, like where they're almost collapsing into each other, they, they just don't work. They don't, like their leverage point goes away and it fades. Um, and it can be unsafe too, because it'll work through a certain portion of the anti-sway and then it'll start to fail when it gets into the tight stuff. And that's, you know, that's when your body roll is most profound. Like I said, everything has been gone through as far as the welding. Uh, you know, I had to cut some of the sheet metal out here to get 360. Get some light. So, all is well. There's root pass stuff under there for the one inch tubes. Uh, that's also stuff we didn't talk about yet, so we'll talk about that. Uh, but you can see like all our Junctions here. Same with up here. So everything's pretty solid. Just trying to make sure you guys get good light in here. Hope the focus is good. Uh, but there's some really good symmetry in here too. Just kind of get a grasp on the shock mounts. Obviously like all the tube sections are welded first, but you can see they're ready to get final passed. I fucking hate how I'm talking right now. I'm just tired, just exhausted. So you can see all the shock mounts. They're kind of ready. All the like the gusting, the tire, weird B pillar stuff in because we have about a triple B pillar going on here. So you got a, I guess you'd have an A pillar, a B pillar, C pillar, D pillar, E pillar. Huh. Anyways, this stuff's ready to go. Uh, and then you can kind of just see the symmetry here. We have some pretty nice additions to the rear chassis. So um, all of this is completely functional. Everything's there for a reason. And I think you guys can definitely tell that there's a fuel cell in there now, or at least a cell can. Uh, one thing I mentioned on there was seam saddles. Um, that's kind of an interesting term, but what that is is the can, like usually when you're building a fuel cell can or you're building around a can, you wanna have the tube or the chassis structure be a support system for the like the surfaces of the can. So then if there's fuel sloshing around or especially like hammering down upon compression, that it's not like blowing into free space and then blowing your seams out. And where the fuel cell landed, even on the sides, like, you know, it it's supported in a lot of areas, but on the side here, it needed to have some saddles. So there's like isolated floating saddles here that are like broke 90 degree 90 thou chromoly. And what those do is that just literally 
helps that seam. So if there's big impact repetitively from the bladder and the fuel in there, it's not wanting to split the seam of the can or the cell open. All right, something to think about in here too um, is our third seat. So we left a lot of room here. I mean, obviously there's like a big cavity. You can see where kind of the, the old B-pillar tube is, the ground tube. And then you can see the frame kicks. But what we're gonna wanna do, uh, we're definitely gonna wanna add some more structure. So just for wherever the base of the third seat is, we'll wanna tie some structure in, we'll compress the axle, we'll have the upper links come through and then we'll figure out exactly what we can get away with for real estate where we can build kind of a shelf just for the seat. Uh, probably some sort of X, just you know, by second nature. Uh, but that's something to look forward to. So I think the thing we wanna talk about uh, primarily here is the fuel cell can. Um, we've gotten some pretty solid winds here. So this is the top view from like the, I guess this would be the C pillar. Um, you know, like be where the, where the third seat would be right here. But this, uh, this all of the shape of this fuel cell is all by design. Uh, it's kind of worked out just like we planned. What I'll do is I'm gonna, I'll run us through the tire swinger since it's on there and the bumper and the tailgate. And then we'll open up and we'll check out the fuel cell hold down and the actual fuel cell can itself. Final welding, lemon strap tabs, rear bumper, tailgate storage, tire swinger. Okay, so this thing. Truck. I think first episode or second episode, I don't know, whatever, part one or part two. Um, I mentioned the truck came with a bumper that wasn't bad. Uh, I also mentioned that it came with a tire carrier swing out thing that wasn't bad. So it wasn't bad means that there's hope where it's not like a design that's completely botched where it's gonna be something we have to completely remake, but it's something we can kind of R and R and get something optimal out of. And that's the process right now. We I just wanted to close out, like we have the fuel cell can in there. We have the hold down structure. Uh, some of the tin work is done in here. And then, you know, this portion just needs to be done because before we start tanning the external part of the chassis in the rear, I need to figure out the structure that goes in, ties into the chassis because this is gonna hold 239s or 240s. And that's a sufficient amount of weight and leverage um, where it needs to be tied into actual tube, not to body, not to tin work. Um, it had a big like unit bearing style thing here um, that was like a big apparatus coming off the bottom. It was hanging below profile of the actual bumper. So just a lot of design errors. Uh, functionally, it worked. It just didn't look like it was on, like it was supposed to be on like a high-end luxury pre-runner or a high-end motorsports vehicle. It just, you know, looked like a trailer thing or something at an amusement park to like go into the gate or something. So. Um, we shortened this stuff up. This also had like a giant Heim up top here, and it was just like a big <laughs> and a Heim on the thing. Um, again, functionally it worked, but just trimming the fat off it to make it like look dynamic and you know put good design into it is key because we can't like build all this and then have something that looked like it did. So right now we shaved off the big apparatus here. We took this down, uh, made threaded machined like bung inserts for this guy. So we'll run a Heim here that's really short misalignment. We will have it really close. Now it's, it's kind of sucked in to the actual like outer perimeter of the tailgate. And then we'll have another Heim on the bottom that's in single shear that we'll just have a bolt going through it. And um, that, well, I guess it wouldn't be single shear. It's just like, this is a floating structure and the other one's floating on the bumper. But uh, bolt through the bottom and then it'll be like a nice smaller boxed area. It'll have a lot less footprint because we can get our winds like really easily right here. Like there's nothing, you know, and the Heim can dismiss a line. So it's just a straight shot, nice box plate in here. And it's not something like, you know, it's just like clean, trimmed, sucked to the car. Um, way less of a footprint. Same thing over here. This had like a, like a twisted kind of situation going on. And then there was there was a horizontal bolt and that you had to drive the bolt in to secure the whole swinger. So this thing would pivot on that side, it would swing and then you'd essentially release whatever mechanisms here and then this whole thing 
kind of come out far so make sure you're not in like a tight space and then you can put your tailgate down uh, what makes sense for us here is to put the pin or you know locking mechanism in a vertical orientation instead of horizontal and then what we'll do is like we'll have a catch this thing will go in you know this piece would go in here and obviously there'll be a catch where this will swing in and this will be boxed and what we'll do on the bottom one is we'll kind of have a draw or it's an angle instead of just a straight uh, 90 or perpendicular plate here so that thing if, if there's any kind of sag from the tires being on there or anything like that we'll try to put preload in it we have some adjustment with the heim but just as like a secondary measure to help it it'll have it'll have like a little bit of an angle so it'll kind of and go in there and then we'll put like a military quick release pin through the top you know it's in double shear and then this whole structure can tie in to the chassis and we'll probably tie like a couple bolts to the sheet metal just to like ensure rigidity through the whole thing same on the other side with the bolts to the sheet metal so it's going to simplify a lot of things and then what we did too is we took this whole structure uh put the tire on one side and i looked at like you know your approach angle through here and what's going on and we lifted the tires up and then we put them at more of an angle um, just so like it makes sense and they're not like you know poopy diaper style off the back of this thing plus there's a baja designs rtl right here um, a rear tail light so we want to make sure that the height of these things make sense to be able to see the tail light back there and also just not make like when this thing wheelies it won't just be a source of contact every single time like that's not saying you won't hit the tire but at least get them up a little bit where it's not going to be so much of a of a thing the person that built this they, they used 250 wall tube and it's actually not 250 wall what it is is it is 120 wall two inch chromoly with a one and three quarter 120 wall tube inside sleeved all the way and then bent so when we like we cut this old one off um, and looked in there and like same with the ends it is literally two tubes in this whole thing um, I don't play those type of games, but I understand if people want extreme rigidity, like maybe a monster truck, like look at this, go back that way, Joey. This could be a monster truck radius arm, you know, raw, 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 you know, like that, that could be, that makes sense, right? 250 wall on that thing. And then that's your like, you know, that's where your caster set is. And then you have like a big old hind back here or something or a Johnny joint. It's just kind of about retrofitting that, like retaining some of it. I like the concept of the tires back there, again, for packaging constraints and proportions on this thing. Like if we're scooching the rear axle back 10 inches, then it makes sense to like, when there's such a short overhang to get another 12 or 14 inches off the back. Not only is that good for looks, but that also complements the weight distribution in the back. So, you know, I would estimate this tank is probably 90 gallons um, 90 gallons over the rear axle and then we're going to have storage which we'll get into next and then we have this big old chingaderas it's all 316s and then we have the two 39s or 40s if you want to go to 40s later so um, is it going to be heavy in retrospect to everything else that's off-road not really uh, it'll still be lighter than most stuff and the thing is a lot of the weight will be balanced out by the solo beams in the front and i mean we're talking thousand horsepower whipple charged ls so uh, we're going to be fine on putting power to the ground easy as it is or is there like fuckery attached to it i feel like it's fuckery oh no okay man someone grabbed that with vice grips or something and that would ruin you if you grabbed that wrong A little 22. okay so we talked about you're probably just looking at that, right? Yeah. Well, do we want to talk about that, or should we just let's 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 stick to the tailgate right now? So, just because we started unpacking it from the rear, um, what we want to do here is um, Steve down at Vildosa and his buddy Victor. They uh, came up with like a just a bolt-on, like a hinge rear window. So what that lets us do is we're gonna gut this whole thing. Um, there won't need to be a mechanism in here. A lot of this will leave the outside perimeters. And then what's gonna go on is like, if you kind of look at this, go right here, Joe, and then I'll, 
Like I want to show you guys the void in between like the hold downs here and this. So all of this will build out, right? So we'll empty all this portion out. All of this can, it'll go in, it'll get boxed and then we'll, we'll actually draw out and build more to where when you close this, it's right there and it's tight. Now what happens is when you put this down, this turns into a full tool containment area. Um, and I guess you could call it a storage containment area, but you could have, you know, this can open in different compartments and this is kind of just like spitballing, speaking out loud here, um, but obviously like basics, right? Like recovery stuff, um, any kind of tool bags, toe straps, any soft goods. You can kind of have itemized compartments, maybe three compartments, but this would be elevated. And then you open that thing up and everything is in here. You could even do it like foam style, like a gun case or something um, where it's all, kind of shaped pertaining to what you're putting in there. You could even do that same thing and have like, you could have it all tits where you could have like an alternator, you could have a power steering pump, you know, you could have a starter, like you could have all of your accessories all foamed, all sick, like, whoa, sick, you know? You know, that's, that's the concept here. So leaving, you know, like leaving this where there's room, that was all original intention. And then I've gone in and kind of just cleaned some of this up with sheet metal just to get a kind of a final presentation on what this is going to look back here. You can see on each side there's like provisions that I just roughed in where this is like a USB and an inverter and then on that side would be like air pickup and maybe like a terminal or something. Uh, and what we'll have is like like fringed in areas or like sunken areas that have um, sources there like power sources and air sources. So when you open this you're kind of like turnkey. This stuff can probably be thicker like maybe eighth inch aluminum top lids. So if you're in here, you can like open one up, grab something, and then like, you know, kind of do it modular where if you needed to work out of this, you can take, you know, stuff out of here and then operate like a table on this, you know, plug power in here, charge your phone right here, run an air cord, you know, wherever you need to, like just have this as like a service area. Um, that's like the kind of dialed thing we want. This is gonna be like a dedicated Mexico truck. So it'll come over here to do like exhibition style stuff, uh, probably a lot of the Terra events, and then anything that we really want essentially, or any of the cruises, but really this will be like a Nora vehicle, a Cabo vehicle, um, just built for fucking in Mexico. So we can move on to the fuel cell. I seem tired it's because I'm tired you know I'm actually tired a lot of times I'll be like I don't fucking get tired but today's a tired day okay um, let's run through this shop tabs rear bumper tailgate storage tire swinger fuel cell hold downs um, seat ordered mounts okay um, all right so I think we're good fuel cell this is like our biggest thing we wanted back here we had that like original intentions equaling results this was the number one thing that we were looking to package into the rear chassis. Um, it wasn't like tool bags or this or that. It was straight up fuel. Uh, as much as we can fit, you know, as high and safe as we can make this thing. Uh, and then we take that and then we put shape into it. And this is kind of what you get. And like, I'm, I'm very pleased with the outcome on this thing. Um, the hold down structure, like the whole thing from like start to finish we've thought about and packaged and put, put design sorry that's gross you guys um put design into uh if you kind of look at like even the bead rolls those are purposely there to follow the tubes like and we didn't have the tubes there so like the layout just on the can we had to think about okay we're gonna pop we're gonna pop a mounting point off the chassis from this corner uh, and then this corner is going to be here. This is going to want to follow here. This tube is going to want to hold the lip down. It's going to go right above the hardware. Uh, and then the same here, like this, this step roll follows this tube, both sides. And then that X kind of does like all of this has tension and symmetry in it where you get like serious design wins and you get complete functionality. So this whole thing comes out, it's a two piece setup because sometimes also with like these fuel cell cradles, same with the circular ones, if you're trying to land a bunch of locations and it's also on something that's subject to like pushing or distorting, uh, it just, it renders itself hard to nail all of the threaded locations. So this top portion comes out 
And then these stringers, these are just like tie rod supports uh, with welded bungs. All, all of this is half inch hardware. So it's all gonna be consistent. Just use one impact or whatever to get it all off. And all of these are threaded portions or bungs or inserts that are into the chassis. So we weld all that, you know, and you just buzz these off. The other thing on this, you know, a couple of these cars, it, it's funny because this is a little tangent, but the, like years ago, I was like, oh, it would be badass if every truck we build can have like 12 point everything, like where like even like the quarter inch fasteners, like, you know, a lot of guys will run 12 point in the running gear, like all the suspension, all the shock mounts, all the, like the steering, parts um, and they'll use the 12 point in a functional way where it's like it's it's necessary or it's an additional strength benefit but i would love I, I love the cosmetic detail of a 12 point and jeff like that was the thing he's like make sure like every bolt is 12 point he's like i want to make sure you like every single one is a 12 point bolt and i'm like say less of course this whole thing so like all of these like bigger half inch bolts kind of seems like a big bolt for this situation but when you put a 12 point in there, like the head and the flange on that will be perfect. And that's kind of what we mocked it up with originally, um, just to get a feel for it. But this portion is done. Something to think about too, is our fill, our fuel fill, and then our pickup. So, you know, the high, in theory, the pickup doesn't need to be at the highest point, but the fill where you're gonna actually, you know, pump fuel into this thing should be at the highest point. So you're filling up max capacity. So this portion here is where we're gonna house our fill. Uh, and what's probably gonna go on is we'll make a custom fill plate here that'll be more triangular. And then we'll have two pickups, like something maybe just one round that'll come out of that, like, you know, just one larger tube. And then it'll like Y off. Because what we wanna do is we wanna run a pickup out here. And what we'll have is once the hard top goes on, we'll build like a provision that mounts off of the chassis and then something that goes into the, to like the back window. The back window will be like a Lexan or what was the optic armor? Um, some kind of optic armor material. And that will, like it'll just add a nice complimentary detail on the outside too. So that's something to look forward to. The other thing is a harness bar mount. So we'll probably have another tube in here that'll grab the rear shoulder pads for the, for the, uh, or the shoulder straps for the third seat. Uh, and then this part's done, like <sighs> something else to think about too is a partition. Uh, what I mean by that is like, I think for safety, you would want something dividing the fuel from the interior cabin space. And we've kind of kicked around like putting some sort of um, like transparent um, barrier through here and all the way out to like where the hard top is. So obviously you'd have like something in this portion up here and then you have like like perimeter hits of something like breaking it up and we got to figure out what we're going to do for that what kind of material um, i don't want to make it something where it closes it out like visually where it's just dark and like it looks like just a wall um, so we have to kind of find a way to win on that all right something to consider too we talked about um, the substructure under the cell and then also uh, provisions for our uh, fuel filters and um, pumps. And so what we'll do is, you can kind of see the, the profile here of the bumper, like it, it almost goes from the notch, the C notch, there's a sway bar arm, and then kind of dips down, comes at a, like a decline angle towards the rear of the car, and then that's your bumper profile. So we have some extra real estate in here. This void here, once we put like a skid or some kind of closeout surface on here, this gives us all the room we need, or we can have um, you know, pre and post filters and our fuel pumps, uh, all our plumbing can be hidden in here. And then you can also see like, this is part of the substructure for the cell, all the small tube. So the way that, uh, we want to panel this truck, I don't know if I talked about it before, but I'd like to do kind of an unorthodox style, uh, panel job on here where it, like, it makes more sense to me to close out. I want to close out the exterior areas. And what I mean by that is like, instead of starting the tin work from the inside, we're like almost like this, where you'd see the tube and then you'd be welding to that side. I want to like tin and streamline all the exterior. So you don't even see like seams or you don't see any tubes. Like it's all completely like start, you know, obviously the bumper, I guess that's not a good reference, but like even, even where the chassis, like the frame is here, like start your sheet metal off of 
off the frame, like on the outside, and just kind of streamline it all the way up into like the, you know, the, the fender well there. So I did mention the front scan last time. Um, we are, we kind of had to figure out like how much up travel we actually want to get because the biggest thing with these frames is that, you know, the driver side diff wants to compress way more than the frame allows it. And the up travel is limited by that first. And then the actual joints, the drivetrain in there um, being limited, you know? So like with Jason, we kind of had to go back and forth and figure out like how much of that frame do we actually want to remove? And where does it get to a point where we're removing so much frame that there's only like an inch left and then I'm building structure on top of it. And we're kind of at that point. So uh, we're gonna opt to have the thing bump as extreme as it can in the front. And then we'll make extra provisions like to supplement structure into the chassis. Uh, and then same, the cross member, all that whole thing from Jason's gonna come kind of like the F800, but it's going to come as like a, like a sub assembly. So pivots, um, rack mount um, swingers all of that will be all in one part and then we'll kind of just plug it into the frame and it's done uh, stuff to anticipate for next update um, the spare tire swinger hold down thing that complete um, the seat structure in there seats mounted complete the fuel fills pickup that complete um, this thing probably i don't know if we'll tap into this thing right off the bat I think we might want to just make gains through this other stuff um, that's really prominent. And then if we want to detail this thing out later, maybe do that. Uh, something else too is the sheet metal. I want to really close out the back of this truck. It's not too far to close it out. And then we get to move into the front. Uh, and then obviously like this dash is going to be a thing too. So we're going to build a full custom dash. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be like two pods. Uh, Jeff's pretty adamant on where he wants his control. So we'll, we'll have him sit in the car and tailor that to him again and fit him just like a suit. Uh, and then, you know, individual pods with like a big drop down in the middle, I think where there's like a void, I'd love to see that. So three seats, um, that whole deal, figure out the partitions. I don't think we'll actually build that, but at least get some clarity on what we're going to do there. Um, and have all of this sheet metal in the back. Like that's what I'd really love to see is just the whole, car closed out and and when i talk about that like what i mean i know i talked about it under the car but what i mean is like even this part like i don't want to even see this i want to start the sheet metal where this thing banks off like the bottom tangent of this and it goes in and like we'll put the sway bar where it needs to go so like there's you can see like the range of motion of the sway bar arm in the tin work and box like everything out here and the bump will kind of just be like all notched into here and it'll be like seamless and streamlined and we'll put all the bead rolls where they go. But when you look at it from here, you're not gonna see like bullshit tube like this and it's not gonna be removable panels. Like the whole, this whole thing, you'd obviously have your shocks come through and then like right, like it'll wrap around the back of the shocks and it'll come up here and it'll be streamlined. So like if you wanted to, you could just take a pressure washer, clean this whole thing and wipe it and you're not like getting shit stuck anywhere. You're not having like debris, gravel, nothing. It's just like, it literally looks like a nice, beautiful contoured surface under here. Like if you had like a streamlined inner fender, you know, and it won't be removable. It'll all be silicone bronze. We'll probably put access panels where we need to. Like I think the top of the bump cap might need like an access panel in here, just so you're not screwing, like having to screw the pooch and take the fuel cell can out just to service the top of the bump. Just think about stuff, you know, in a proper way, but really like I want to just press on streamlining the sheet metal on this thing. And I've thought about it with other trucks with the exotic. We did some of it on the back, like on the underside by the shocks in the C pillar area. But again, just that's like, that's the most exciting portion of the rear to me is, is seeing all the sheet metal, like completely streamlined under here and like seamless where it's just clean because really from the inside, like you don't like, you can make it pretty on the inside and you can do it where you build it from the inside and you put all the panels on the tubes on the inside and it's very easy to do. It's the, that's why, right? It's the easiest, most satisfying looking thing, but functionally it, it lends itself to like more work and more upkeep on the outside and visually on the outside, it doesn't look nearly as good because it's just like loose ends. And when you put upholstery and carpet in there, 
then you just lose the whole sense of it anyway. So it's like, I'd rather build this thing out like on based on the external. And then if there's like nice voids in here, I can run wiring through here. I can run plumbing through here. You don't even see it. It's all inside. It's all in its own little cavities. And then wherever you need to make a couple like fill panels, you just make those profound on the inside for upholstery or for whatever makes sense. Okay, that is part three on carry. Uh, follow Juicy Motorsports if you don't. That's Jeff, he's a client of mine. He's extremely supportive. I support him the best I can. Uh, a lot of these guys have a vision. Um, a lot of trust is put into us to executing the vision or just taking something that's a rough thought and fine tuning and molding that thing into what they are. Uh, we've had some pretty good results. So this is gonna be another exciting one. Um, I am, you know, I'm stoked to see where this thing goes and how it works because I, I believe in this thing and especially like riding in BJ's Loki. Uh, if we have something with twice the power and more travel and four wheel drive, I think we're gonna get really good results. So um, stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe.